Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 595. Testosterone is protective against prostate cancer. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about the benefits of testosterone when it comes to prostate cancer. This is probably something you've never heard of unless you've been listening to me. Uh, I've been in the camp uh, of giving testosterone to prevent prostate cancer as well as giving testosterone to some of my patients who have had prostate cancer successfully treated or resected by surgery. Uh, for a long time. And that is not based on, oh, willy-nilly, I just decided this. That is based on solid research done by Dr. Mor- Morgan Taylor from Harvard. And he, he has been doing research and determining that men who are at high risk for prostate cancer can take testosterone replacement when their testosterone drops and should take testosterone replacement to prevent them from getting prostate cancer. So that's the first thing that I want you to hear. I want you to hear men who are at risk for prostate cancer should take testosterone when they lose their own testosterone and start becoming impotent and start having trouble thinking and start feeling like um, crying at movies, feeling uh, like they don't have any motivation. Those are all signs of low testosterone and it should be replaced. One of the biggest risk factors that Dr. Morgan Taylor figured out was that men who don't have enough testosterone often get more prostate cancer or will have a higher risk of getting prostate cancer than men who have normal testosterone or replace their testosterone. So this is something that he's been working on for a very long time and has proven is finally breaking through the urology literature to tell us we have been doing it wrong all these years, which is we've been telling men not to take testosterone because of a risk of prostate cancer, which then has backfired and they've gotten more prostate cancer. And we've been telling men who have had prostate cancer and had it successfully treated that if they want no recurrence, they shouldn't take testosterone. Well, now we have another researcher on our team Uh, His name is Tom Ollering, and he he is from the um, UC uh, Irvine campus medical school of the University of California, and he does research on testosterone uh, and prostate cancer. He has has just finished a very uh, comprehensive study of men who have had prostate cancer and have had either radiation or surgery to remove prostate or to make the prostate shrink and kill the cancer. He has then divided them into two groups, given half of them testosterone to bring it up to normal levels, and the other half did nothing. And that did exactly what they would have done if anybody had been treating them in the U.S. So they did nothing. This is very important. The men who did nothing had a 50% higher rate of recurrence than the man, men who took testosterone. So the men who had, they both had prostate cancers. They both had them treated. But then afterwards, half of the men that were not taking, excuse me, not taking testosterone had a 50% higher rate of recurrence. It's absolutely the po- positively the opposite thing that we were trained with in medical school 40 years ago. And why we were trained with the belief that testosterone caused or fed prostate cancer was because 
one man with just a few patients um, proved somehow that testosterone would feed prostate cancer. It was not a study that nowadays would even be looked at because there were no, there were just, they started out with three patients, they ended up with one. That's not a study. And that's not something that any scientist would agree with as, as a reasonable study to determine an entire um, three or four decades of treatment. So, but we still go back to this one guy in the 1940s who started this and we would not believe him now, but nobody knows where all that information came from. We just remember in medical school, they said, if you have prostate cancer, you can't take testosterone. Okay, so, uh, so Dr. Allering, Thomas Allering, um, did a ma matched his patients. He matched them for age, he matched them for stage and grade of their prostate cancer, and then he put two equal men in the different groups. It wasn't like he took a whole bunch of men that had low risk cancer and put them in one group and high risk in another. Each one of the people in these in these studies or the duos were matched according to their uh, their genetics because there's a genetic um, risk of prostate cancer that has to do with a, a SNP in your genetics that increases your risk. And so he would put equivalent numbers of SNPs, people with an equivalent number of them or number of um, they're matching, they're actually matching genes and they're AG, AG. In any case, the length of that SNP actually determines whether you're more sensitive and at more risk of getting prostate cancer than somebody else. But he matched them. Long SNP, long SNP, short SNP, short SNP. So this is, this is a study that was very well done. And it is amazing because it shows that testosterone, it actually prevents recurrence of, of prostate cancer after somebody's had his first treatment. The interesting thing about prostate cancer is you really get two chances at it. You either, if you have surgery, then afterwards, if you have a recurrence, and the way they determine recurrence is by, by testing your PSA. Generally, when your prostate's removed, your PSA goes down to zero. If your PSA starts climbing, then they use uh, radiologic methods of finding where that prostate cancer is, and then they use very focused radiation on that area. But after that, there's nothing else you can do. You're, you're done with treatment. So if you get a recurrence after that, then that's a huge deal. So, um, so Dr. Allering, found out that men can take testosterone and decrease their risk of recurrence after that first treatment or after the second treatment. It doesn't matter. It still decreases the, the rate of their recurrence. Um, most men don't die of prostate cancer, by the way. I mean, it's uh, prostate cancers. I'll read this from his, his study. Prostate cancer is the most common non-skin malignancy in men, accounting for 20% of all cancer diagnoses. Prostate cancer is also notable in that after a radical prostatectomy, men have predicted average survival of 22 years. That's great. That means most of the time people get prostate cancer when they're old, over 60, and then they have an average survival of 22 years, and that's average. So that's a good, that's a good treatment um, percentage. In other words, I would be thrilled if, you know, I had something and they said, oh, you have a 22, you know, 22 years of this and it's not coming back. So, so it's not, it isn't as deadly as people think, but the treatment for it can change your quality of life drastically because prost radical prostatectomies are very, are very tricky procedure and they have to avoid several nerves and if you are to ever have um, a normal erection again. So it's a big decision to have that kind of surgery versus uh, radiation. And radiation can do the same thing and end with the same problem. But this is something that changes your quality of life as well. If you were on, pretend you were on testosterone and may not have gotten prostate cancer 
as early as you would have if you'd not been on testosterone, but you do get it and you have to go off. Well, if you have low testosterone, you can't think, you may not be able to do your job properly. Your uh, muscle mass goes down. You're not as strong. Your motivation to work goes down. And your libido, your sex drive, is shot. And worse yet, even if that's not shot, your ability to have an erection is. So this is a, it's a big deal to have this problem and have any kind of treatment for it. So you don't want to have two treatments. You want to have as few as possible. So I believe that what uh, Tom Ollering was doing in his research was giving men hope. Men can take testosterone after they've had their prostate cancer treated, and they can feel safe in taking it and even benefit from it by preventing a recurrence. I mean, I think that's very hopeful. I mean, my patients who get testosterone, who are male, are so happy that they feel like they've got their lives back, their libido back, their relationships back. They don't have to worry about whether they can get an erection or not. Testosterone helps with all of that. And if you already have this uphill battle, having had surgery for prostate cancer, then you need to have a little oomph from your testosterone to help you actually have an erection, have a normal sex life. That's quality of life. And in some cases, people um, believe that quality of life is just as important as length of life. But in this case, you don't have to choose between them. The same thing that gives you your quality of life back gives you your length of life back. So I thought that it was very important to talk about this because of all the people who are misinformed. It's another lie that medicine has just propagated without looking back and seeing why we tell people this. Testosterone is not the cause of prostate cancer. Testosterone may prevent prostate cancer and certainly prevents it from becoming as aggressive or as, as severe if you're taking it when you do get prostate cancer. But how does it do that? And that's the last thing that we'll talk about. How does testosterone actually make that happen? Well, there's several ways. The first way is testosterone stimulates your immune system. Your thymus gland is right here behind your breastbone, and it stimulates the production of T killer and T helper cells. Those are the cells that gobble up cancer every day. They, we all have cancer cells form, and we, all kill, and we kill our cancer cells with our T cells, and that's how it works. But when our T cells and our immune system start tanking after we're 60, then we start getting cancers more frequently because we're not gobbling all of them up. Well, what also happens to men after 60? Their testosterone drops. So testosterone is a stimulator for the thymus. Testosterone stimulates the number and the activity of T killer and T helper cells. So that's one reason why it prevents prostate cancer. Another reason is that testosterone actually helps the uh, metabolic syndromes that we get as we get older, it, pre it helps lower blood sugar, it helps decrease insulin resistance, and diabetes is a huge risk factor for all cancers. Remember this one line, cancer loves sugar. If you have cancer, do not eat sugar, do not eat carbs, do not, do not eat anything but the most minimal healthy carbs that you can because cancer loves to grow when there's a very high sugar environment. Testosterone, on the other hand, causes you not to have such high blood sugar in your, in your uh, blood. It helps you burn calories, therefore let, makes you less obese, and, and testosterone also makes you less insulin resistant so you can use your blood sugar in your muscles and burn calories. So that's another way that testosterone works. Um, testosterone also increases your muscle mass and decreases your fat mass and therefore helps you lose weight, lose fat, and drops your blood pressure. High blood pressure increases heart disease. If you have high blood pressure, that is just one of the risks for heart disease. And we were talking about cancer, but we're also talking about heart disease, another killer of men. Testosterone lowers your risk of getting heart disease or of dying of heart disease. That's one of the other things that 
he was looking at in his study. Testosterone also is an anti-inflammatory. People who have uh, autoimmune diseases with high inflammation or people who are obese, they all have high inflammation. Testosterone lowers the inflammatory process going on in your body, which also lowers heart disease. It also lowers cancer. So it's, a, it's the good hormone. It's the hormone of youth. It's the hormone that keeps us young and healthy and not getting all of these diseases. Um, if this was taught in medical school, and if doctors were as committed to this as scaring people by saying testosterone is going to hurt them, then I think we would have a much more uh, robust and healthy older population. You know, we've learned to, we've figured out how to make people live forever, but we haven't figured out how to make them live well. And testosterone, especially for men, but also for women, is the key to living well without disease. So I want you, I pray that you hear me and find a doctor who agrees with this concept. Dr. Morgan Taylor's book is called Testo Testosterone for Life. And he, it's on Amazon, it's in any bookstore. You need to read that. You need to read my book, Got Testosterone? Question mark, because testosterone is like milk. Everybody needs it at some point in their life. So read those two books, and I hope you are convinced that to stay healthy as you age, you need to get your testosterone back, and you shouldn't be made fearful of getting prostate cancer uh, by, by saving your quality of life. I'll see you next week. We'll have some more fun subjects for you to listen to. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.